because they only had two cars. And if the first one didn't work, the second one had to work. And if the second one didn't work, they were screwed. But the first car worked fine, so that's where it is. And anybody can go to this, it's really cool. Oops, wrong way. Okay, the first, it's, it's like everywhere you go in Moab, which by the way is in southwest, no excuse me, southeast Utah. And it's all desert and sandstone cliffs. This is called uh, Klondike Bluff. And Klondike Bluff has an amazing assortment of rocks. There's two trails. There's the Agate Trail, which is right here, which is this circle. And then there's the Jasper Trail, which you've got to be a pretty good hiker to do. So the first day I did, I figured, heck, I'm not tired, so we're going to go to the Jasper Trail, which was a total of six miles round trip. And it is not an easy hike. It is not easy at all, but well worth it. Well worth it. This is the beginning of the trail. Okay, just want to let you know. There is a trail, but not always. And this is what you can see on your way. You wanted to see petroglyphs. Here's your petroglyphs. There's your petroglyphs. Oh, and they're all on the faces of the, the oh, cliffs yeah. everywhere in Utah. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. How they do There's this. my friend Katie who is looks just as stupid as I look when <laughs> we're rock hounding with our backpacks and our buckets. And that doesn't look high, but we're overlooking probably around the 20 story cliff there. And we had to hike along that cliff to get to where the Jasper was. And this is what you end up with. Wow. Look at this. 
everywhere. You just pick it up. You just, it's just there. And what astounds me is there's nobody around. There's no, I mean, I would think you could sell tickets to any rock hound to be get, go there and get the Jasper. I don't understand why people aren't going there, but maybe it's better that I don't wish that. That's right. <laughs> Wouldn't be there. But look at what you have to choose from, and it's everywhere. This is what I got there. I got some beautiful, and I have all these rocks that you see photographs, and you feel free to come up afterwards. Just the most exquisite, solid, red jasper. On this, on those, on those trails, just beautiful. I, I, I can't wait to cab it. I really can't. And it's a little bit different from, uh, and I'll show you uh, petrified wood. But I do believe that the red jasper is basically the same as the petrified wood, but a little bit older and a, a harder stone. But it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere, and it's going to make gorgeous cabs. And I just had this one picture because this is this is along the trail. This is how nasty the trail gets. But you can see here, here, and here, and another one. I don't know where else? Maybe back there. More jasper. Just jasper everywhere. But unfortunately, it's only red. They have no other color but red. But that's okay. That makes me a happy camper. Okay. And there's another part of the trail. This was a tough hike. This is truly a tough hike, guys. But it was worth every minute of it. Let's see. Another part of the hike. And we're not we're talking really high here. It doesn't look that high in the shots, but it's pretty high. But incredible oh, scenery. Crazy. <laughs> incredible scenery. Remarkable scenery. Okay, now the next one, so we did that and we were exhausted. Oh my god, we were tired. I'd love to say that I did all my injuries on a trip like that instead of Pam's driveway, but <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? So the next day we did the Agate Trail, which is this. And the Agate Trail you could do forever because there's three parts to it. There's the east, the midline, and the west. And that's about, you can see that, that's not as long. That's about uh, eight, say two miles, the whole thing. But again, full of petrified wood. Look at it. I mean, do you have to do you have to work to get that? Nope. You don't have to work at all. It's like it's like going to the supermarket and picking out your favorites. Now, most of the petrified wood that you find in Moab area is very chippy. It's it's I mean, if you're collecting petrified wood, you'll get beautiful specimens. If you're collecting petrified wood for um, cabochons or slabbing, you've got to be pretty critical of what you get. The first year I went, it was like, rocks, 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 rocks. And I picked up everything, and half of it's no good for me. But this year, I was very, very, very particular of what I took. And as an example, oh, let me show you the next slide. Nope, okay, let me show you. Anyway, that's the kind of tree that all the petrified wood in Moab is. It's a conifer tree, it's a pine tree. They say it looks like that. And it's also the same trees that were in the petrified forest in southern Arizona. You find it on the ground. Look at that beautiful, beautiful specimen of petrified wood. Do you have that piece? Uh, I got that one. Don't worry. They're about this size, like this. Now this is gorgeous. When you when you look at these close up later, when you want to look at them, you'll see I was real careful. No cracks, no fractures, nothing. Because I'll show you later the cabochons that I've made from some of these these um, stones. So there's, there's different colors of wood depending upon the petrified wood. There's the red <coughs> petrified wood. There's the black. I don't know why I put agate. So I was supposed to put petrified wood. I was having um, hallucinations, I guess, from my good medicine, good medication. <laughs> so you'll get a pure white, which is pretty boring, but it's still, still pretty. That's that one. 
And then you'll get some that has black in it, which actually makes, oh, no, that's not it. Well, I'll light it later. And then you'll get what's called pig, they call it red agate or pigeon blood agate. And it's a white stone. And if it has a hint of red, now that doesn't look really red, that's a bright red. And then they call it pigeon blood. Don't ask me why. I guess they figured pigeons died and bled on the stone or something. I don't know why it's called pigeon blood, but that's what it's called. And that a, makes a beautiful cabochon, absolutely gorgeous cabochon. Now, here we go with the good stuff we found. We were looking in the same place where you saw all those rocks, and I found this. And I thought, what could that be? That's weird. That's a st that doesn't belong there. And then another person we were with, her name is Liz, which was Katie's daughter-in-law, found a couple other stones, and she like this, with amid all the petrified wood. And I loved this one. It was just pretty, and I decided to keep it. And I told Liz, "Oh, that's nothing. Just throw it away." Stupid, <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Because it turned out, I put this on Google, and I said, round pink stone with black stripes, Moab, Utah. Boom, comes right up. This exact stone looked just like it. It's a gizzard, a dinosaur gizzard stone. Dinosaurs are birds, right? So birds, chickens have gizzards. They eat rocks. The dinosaurs ate rocks too in order to grind up the food that's in their stomach. So this is an actual gastrolith, it's called, to fancy it up instead of a gizzard wow. stone. It's called a gastrolith. Wow. But this is in, was in a dinosaur's tummy at one time, wow. helping it digest the food. And the stones that I told Liz, I throw away, were also gizzard stones, <laughs> too. So. Let's not tell Liz. Huh? Let's yeah. not tell Liz. <laughs> oh, no, no. And I have, an, I have one other one here. I'll show it to you later. But well, that's I what that. happened to you. You told Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next day, we just, um, Katie's husband, Mel. By the way, this is so funny with these two people. These two people who are like friends for 45 years, wonderful friends, family friends, they were never into rocks. And then we went, the first time I went to Moab to visit them, they stay in the springtime with their son who lives there. And I said, let's go prospecting. And they're like, what? <laughs> oh my God, did I get them hooked. I might as well, I hate to say this, I might as well give them heroin, you know? I mean, it was, they are so addicted now. So Mel, Mel's a hoot. Um, Mel said, Jonas, when I, when you were, I've been looking around and I found a honey hole. I said, what, a honey hole for what? He said, honey hole for Burrow Creek Agate. I said, oh, sure, Mel, let's go. So we climbed down, he, so he takes us to this godforsaken place. We climb down the highway overpass. We have to go under the overpass, and this is going underneath the tunnel. It was actually kind of cool. And then we come up on this beautiful trail that's, up, and, and he's, look, I said, well, where's the Burrow Creek Agate? Oh, no, I don't see any. There was here last year. Well, you don't, if you found it, if you found it last year, you don't necessarily find it this year because all the stones that are found in um, Utah are in washes. There has to be rain that comes down. Like two weeks ago, they had, remember when, Las, uh, not Las Vegas, uh, Death Valley got yeah. done? Oh. If you're a true rock hound, you should be on a plane heading there right now because the washes wash away all the sand and expose the rocks. On the other hand, it also brings dirt down, so it most likely covered all the Burrow Creek agate that was supposed to be there. So we're walking along, and that was a pretty trail. I mean, it's pretty, you know? And then all of a sudden, I said to Mel and Katie, I said, I smell cat pee. Now, I have two cats, so I know what cat pee smells like. I said, I smell, this is horrible. I smell cat pee. 
And they said, I don't know, I don't know, smell any cat pee. I said, yeah, this is really strong. We're going on the trail further and further. It's getting stronger and stronger. We go a little bit further. The trail's getting a little bit hairy. More smell, incredible smell. Overwhelming smell of cat pee. And then, Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> we, we ran like hell. Uh, oh, excuse me, I shouldn't say that. No. It was like you could have had played running like crazy. Went through the other side of the thing, ran up to the car, and we're like, holy cow. Then we found out. The next day on the news, there was someone who was attacked oh, yeah. by a mountain lion. And oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you, on this trail, I saw these humongous footprints. And they were about this big, yep. and you could see the claw marks in the sand. And I said, I'm so stupid, I didn't photograph them. I should have photographed one. And I said, Hey guys, what could this be? And, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> and, and I said, it looks like a cat. Oh yeah, and then we realized, holy, God, we got to get out of here now. So anyway, so that's that adventure. Okay, now we're going to go to the Looking Glass Arch Mesa, which is a really cool place. This is about 20 miles north of Moab. Now this place is old sand dunes. Looks like sand dunes. One thing that I love about Moab is I'm a scuba diver. So to me, it's almost like the desert looks like underwater. You know, it has that same quality about it. It has the open sandy areas and the funky trees that are shaped just like Gorgonian corals and stuff underwater. And and in a sense, this was underwater. This is underwater. And this is the mesa by that arch. So then, look at the rocks, people. Oh, look, at look at them all over. And that's the trail that goes up. It's not that hard. You've got to climb. And, and it's steep. But once you get up on the top, and here I am, just like I'm at the supermarket Publix picking out, <laughs> picking out bananas. Oh, this is a better one. <laughs> and what was hysterical about this, Mel, Mel, who's not as adventurous as us, he's going, I'm going to sit down, and you girls go look. I'm like, hey, that's fine. We're up at the top of this mesa, and all of a sudden, we get knocked over, completely knocked over, and it was a dust devil. Oh. And that scared the living devil. Those things are strong. They're like about 40 mile an hour winds, the turning, and it knocked us down, and we're at the top. Of course, afterwards we laughed, because it was fun. But the, the thought of being knocked down like that for, from a dust devil was amazing. So that is how you can just pick the rocks. Now, on that particular mesa, this is what you get. You get the Utah Burrow Creek agate, which is a beautiful pink agate, and, and when you, if you want to see later, I'll show you the cabochons that come from that. Gorgeous. Beautiful. And then dendritic opal. Just there for the picking. That's it. It's just amazing. Did you get a piece? No, but if you look at her pieces, she'll, she'll show yeah, you here. the rock that she cut it from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she did them. I was looking at them earlier. Yeah. They're beautiful. And then this cracked me up. It was so hot. Huh? I said you won't give anybody a piece of that. <laughs> oh, I got I got some up there on the for the um the people away. have to win it. They have to win it. Yeah. Um, I got four different stones up there. Okay. Okay. And it was so hot that day. Look at that thing. What that, that's it? a longhorn antelope. Uh -huh. So we figure, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom. So I'm going up to this guy, and he went like, get out of here. So he just walks away, won't let me take the picture. Then I go back in the car, then he goes back under the tree, because it's the only tree in the whole place where the poor thing can get out of the sun. It was hot.
They can run up to 65 miles an hour. Mm. Well, he, not, not he, he wasn't running. He wasn't going to run. Why was the temperature? Wow. It was about, on that particular, the first couple days, it was about, about 85 to 90 degrees. But then you can always say, oh, it really wasn't that hot because the humidity was only 10%. Because it's dry heat. But, man, do you get dry skin, your lips get chapped, you have yeah. to drink water, you got to take a lot of water with you, and your eyes get dry. It, it you know, by the end of the, by the end of the, at the end of the trip, when you run out of, uh, oh, where the heck did I get that? Oh, well. You, you, you're using your spray bottle, because you got to take a spray bottle Here with you. Much like you're looking at, yeah. I mean, by the end of the trip, you're sitting there walking, and you're going like this, just to get your mouth wet, because it is so dry. Now, this is where the dinosaurs are from. This is called Morrison. And this is the classic, more the Morrison found formation, rather, that when you see the rocks, you see these bands. And this is a sure sign that there's dinosaurs here. This is our Jur uh, Jurassic rock part. And that is, if you see that, it's the most fertile source. And it's all, I mean, everybody, for some reason, everybody, all the dinosaurs were wandering around then, got flooded out, died, or this whatever, and that's where they are preserved in this formation. Now that is beautiful. Oh, I, I, it's hysterical. And it says, see how it says it's composed of mudstone, which is the deep red stone, and the, 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 this mudstone can be red, this gray color, it can be greenish gray, and it can be blue. Well, I'm going nuts. Dum Dum here is going, turquoise! <laughs> I'm thinking it's turquoise. Because it was so blue, and it was reflecting the color of the sky. It was so bright blue. I'm thinking, oh my god, you thought Honey Hole was the other place. This is the Honey Hole here. But anyway, so we're looking for, we're picking all this stuff up, and it's all around here like this. And you can see the colors. It's a, it, it, it's a beautiful blue, but as soon as you take it away from the sky, it's not blue anymore. See, I mean, it's amazing. I know, but it's not blue. It's, it, that's the weird thing. So there's what it is. It's called, and I, and I don't, I call it Morrison because it's not what we know as Morrisonite as a stone. But it, in Utah, they call it Morrisonite. So I took one of these and slabbed it, and it turned into a bazillion little pieces. It didn't hold together at all. So later, when I, I'm not allowed to do any cutting right now because of the concussion, but because I don't think they want you to <laughs> cut with a tile saw. Yeah, exactly. You might as well hit me over the head. But um, I'm going to try again and see if I can get something out of it because I'd love to cab it. So, okay, and this is how it starts. And, it, and you walk on it, it's volcanic ash. It starts as this and as over like a, about 125 million years, it eventually hardens into that blue red stone. So, okay, so we're walking around looking. Oh, this is the best part of the story. We're walking around looking for all this stuff, and we're just driving a little truck, that a Toyota truck that has Florida license plates, because you've got to have four-wheel drive. You cannot do this in a Toyota Prius, for instance. And all of a sudden, this big white truck comes up behind us. And we look at it, and we go, oh, no, we're in trouble now. And somebody's property. And a BLM officer comes out of the truck. That's your old land man. It's not, not Black Lives Matter, but yeah. your old land man. <laughs> and the most handsome officer. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. His name, was, his name was Officer Cooley. I'll never tell that. Did you take a picture of him? No, I, oh, I'm not allowed. You can't. Oh. You're not allowed. I asked him. Oh. Uh, and he says, and I They're said, not going to believe it in my club. Can I, yeah, can I say to him, I, 
you know, I'm thinking, I said, do you want to move to Florida? Would you like to be my pool boy or something? <laughs> you know? And he's got a flak jacket on. He's got a gun here. He's got a gun here. And he's got a, um, a taser on the front of his chest. And he says, what are you people doing? And I'm like, oh, shit. So, excuse me, camera. And anyway, so he, he says, I said, we're rock hunting. He says, well, what do you got there in your hand? And I said, I got some bloodstone. I found a bloodstone, but it's really a crummy rock. I mean, I'm not going to keep it because it's no good. He says, let me see it. I said, okay. Uh, I don't know what he thought. And he looks at it. He says, you're right. That's bloodstone. And I went, is this a quiz? You know? <laughs> what do I have to do? He says, well, what are you guys looking for? And I said, anything. He says, you know what? He says, I've never done this before. I'm going to take you guys somewhere. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. But then, as we were following him in the truck, we thought, wait a minute. <laughs> this guy, is he like a serial killer or something? Yes. As you Dressed see up. what happened, right? <laughs> no, she, dressed up as, you know, as an officer, and he's really a crazy person yeah. who's wandering the desert. So he takes us, oh my God, so deep into the desert wow. that if we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of here? But then we realized that there were cairns along the path, the, which is a, a cairn is a, a, a pile of stones that bikers and people use to find their way in and out of a place. So we, and we went, oh, thank God, there's cairns. So he takes us to this place. Let me see what. It looks nondescript completely. And he goes, he said, I want to let you know that this place is very special because on the top of this hill right here is a Tyrannosaurus skeleton that they are excavating for the Discovery Channel. Oh, wow. isn't that wow. cool? Oh, that's too cool. What are the coordinates? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. And so we're like going, whoa. Is that that show where that the, di the dinosaur guy? Yeah, there? yeah, yes. And, I, and we're like, going, whoa, he said, there's dinosaur bones everywhere. You can't touch them. You can't take them anywhere. But there's coprolite. There's, petrifi there's uh, petrified palm. There's petrified wood. Anything you can take that, but do not even touch a dinosaur bone. Because he said there's cameras everywhere. I don't know if that's true, but we believed him. We're not fooling around. <laughs> so Katie, she's so cute. She's like Marge Simpson, you know, from The Simpsons. And she goes up to this thing that's on the ground. Oops. And she goes, Janice, is this a dinosaur bone? <laughs> and I walked up to it, and there's this huge, I, I guess it's a tibia. There's a bone just sitting right there on the ground. Oh my it was amazing. Did you get a picture of it? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. I'm, like, I'm like so overwhelmed, and I'm still kind of panting a little bit for all of a But then, so I found, this is really crummy, but this is petrified palm. And this is the coolest thing. I didn't know what this was. And there, it was, I should have taken a photograph of that too. I mean, you, you know, it's kind of funny because I take photographs of pretty much everything, but this was so overwhelming mm -hmm. that you just forget. And all this stuff was lined up on the ground, like this. And I said to the officer, I said, what is that? This is petrified tree bark. And what happened as whatever happened, whether it was a flood, whether it was a asteroid or whatever the heck is, the tree bark just sloughed off in this thickness. It was all over the ground, all just sitting there on the ground, and you could just pick it up like this. Already pre-slabbed. <laughs> Already slabbed for me. I don't know if it's strong or not. It was everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And let's see. So now it's poop time. I said, can we take poop? He says, do you know the difference between poop and bones? I said, yeah, bones has a cellular structure inside, and the poop is whatever. He goes, 
you know your poop, you know. <laughs> so I, um, we found a ton of copper light. This is what it looks like on the outside. And it's kind of like, I hate, I hate to say this, it's kind of like a crapshoot because as far as what you're getting, mm -hmm. because you guess that it is, it may not be. But you kind of guess. And then you open it up and it's this inside. It's inside. And it makes beautiful cabochons. Here's an example of a silver pendant that I made for Katie, the girl that was with me, that is an outstanding oh piece of copper light with the colors. And we just found that on the ground, just sitting there on the ground. Oh my God. Nothing. So there's a happy Janice. <laughs> I'm sitting now. That is cool. This is a giant tree. That's a big, humongous wow. piece of petrified wood. Wow. And it's red. It doesn't show up red, but it's all bright, bright red. And it's, a, it's just, I love that place. I, I'm ready to, I'm going to go again next year. I'm ready to go again because no matter where you go, oh, and by the way, it's 32 degrees there. It was, it was 90 degrees one day, and the next day we were freezing. Yeah. Wow. And it was so much fun. Where is that? That's, well, that's wherever he took us. It's in Moab. It's all, it, it's a long power line drive. Put power line okay. drive and you can find that. I think you're planning a road trip, aren't you? <laughs> In about two weeks. And then, yeah, power line drive has some terrific stuff. You go in the little, you got to go on the little side streets. And then you'll see, like there was one, there was one hill that was all covered with mica. It was beautiful. It was like glistening. It was like Oz. And then there was another place that has this and another place that has that. Wow. So anyway, so now I want to see. So I just want to show you some pretty um, Utah stuff. What a wonderful place. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? What a great drive through. Oh. And this is a beautiful wash. There wasn't any rocks there, but it, what a wonderful rock wash. And there's a sunrise on the Colorado River. And that's it. That's my trip. Oh, my <laughs> Feel free to come over here. I'll put them over there, and I can show you the different rocks that I found and different things. And I also, for the cabbers in you, you can see how beautiful some of these rocks cab. Any questions about can anything? Can you put the map back on there? Hmm? Can you put the map that you had? Back I guess. Off and leave it for a close-up photograph. Well, that's that map is a. Um, it's a map. It's a map on a trail thing. When you go on a trailhead, there's a map, and that particular trailhead, Klondike Bluffs. You can spend. How long are you gonna be there? You can spend your entire week on Klondike Bluffs and get every single thing you've ever wanted. Because, and then you can keep. So look at this. There's Dino Flow there. That's there's Dino, and then right up here not on the map, is where they have the dinosaur tracks in the sand. That that place is about 20 miles north of Moab. Or 89 meets. So on 191, 191 meets 89. and you just go up and it says, there's a sign that says, but you want north Klondike Bluffs. You don't want the south one. The south one's going to take the way down here, which is too far from the good stuff. You want North Klondike Bluffs, and, it, and, and it, it's a little bumpy to get in, but there's a trailhead and there's a place to park, and you got to hike a bit to go in there, but you will never, ever regret going there. Is that there. why they have the EKG, EKG trail? trail? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love that one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is this flexible? If I don't get back there this year, I'm going to kill myself. All U.S. Bureau of Land Management, you can take any. Well, you're allowed to take pounds. 25 pounds a day or something. 250 a year. Right. Who can do it? Do you, uh, <laughs> you have to tell somebody before you go to these places, or you just can't go? Throw I just go. But you want to always go with somebody. You don't want to go by yourself. Because if something happens to you, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Dinosaur bones, out of the question. You can take, this is crazy, you can take fossils that have, say, plants, trilobites, 
something like that, but you cannot take any fossil of a mammal. Vertebrate. Any vertebrate, yeah. Yeah. Everything else is, is free. They don't We're care. Native American. You now you Native step American. into Colorado, Colorado is like only 60 miles away. You step into Colorado, don't take a thing. No. Utah is, is, um, Anything you want. It's Walmart of rocks. So it's by state by state. Regulations. It's state by state regulations. Yeah. Pardon me? No. State. National Park. No, you couldn't take something from Arches, but oh my god, you're awful. Because what happens in Arches, what cracks me up, is they line the roads with rock that they mine. And they just use it as road barriers. And I went up there one time and I went, oh my god, Wonderstone! Look at that Wonderstone! And I went, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Because I didn't want to take it. Because I knew that the moment I picked up that piece of Wonderstone, 40 officers would, you know, come out and arrest me. So um, I didn't take it. But it's amazing. A lot. That's another great place to find stones. When you go to some of the um, dirt roads and they line the roads with um, rocks mm -hmm. to stop erosion, my God, they just mined it. They don't care. <coughs> they don't care what's there. And there's one, it, it's worth it. Many, many times we just stopped and would just look along the side of the road to see what they um, put on the roadside to, in a wash or where it was flooded out or have, something like have that. Have you gone to Gallup? I have been there, but I didn't Gullet collect yourself anything. Yes. So before you get to the park to go into Gullet, you go right